Welcome to Sino-US Observation. Here, you can learn about the hot events between China and the US. If you are interested, don't forget to follow our channel. Recently, it is reported that the United States is tightening export restrictions on chip equipment to China, and LAM Research and KLA, two chip equipment companies in the United States, have confirmed that the United States suppression of Chinese chips has expanded from 10 nanometers to 14 nanometers. And the scope of the new regulations may not be limited to SMIC, but also include other chip manufacturing companies investing and operating in China, such as TSMC's manufacturing plants in the mainland. Wallace, Cly's president and chief executive, said the company had received a notice from the U.S. Department of Commerce asking them not to supply China with equipment used for 14 nanometer and below chip manufacturing. In the past two weeks or so, all U.S. equipment makers have received letters from the U.S. Commerce Department asking them not to supply China with equipment used to make chips 14 nanometers or less, according to people familiar with the matter. The statements of LAM Research and KLA are only the first concrete examples of the further suppression of the Chinese chip industry by the United States. Relevant data shows that mainland China is the world's largest market for LAM Research and KLA. In 2021, revenue from mainland China will account for about one quarter of KLA's total revenue, and a higher proportion of LAM Research, about one third. The suppression of China by the United States is bound to affect the normal development of the global chip industry. Moreover, China is the world's largest chip market, and the United States' suppression of China will eventually hurt American companies. It is reported that the Biden administration's move to expand sanctions on China's chip industry has already been rumored. Some media reports disclosed earlier in July that the U.S. Commerce Department is actively discussing banning the export of advanced chip-making equipment of 14 nanometers and below to Chinese factories. The U.S. is reportedly pushing for allies such as the Netherlands and Japan to ban ASML and Nikon from selling to China the mainstream technology necessary to make most of the world's chips. The most critical of them is the lithography machine produced by ASML in the Netherlands. Previously, the U.S. government has tried to prohibit ASML from selling EUV lithography machines for current advanced processes to China. At present, the United States wants to go a step further and prevent China from obtaining DUV lithography machines produced by ASML. However, the U.S. lobbying has not made substantial progress at present, and the U.S. will raise the limit on the supply of chip manufacturing equipment to China from 10 nanometers to 14 nanometers this time. ASML said it had not received any news, while Nikon said the rule had no impact on its China business. It is worth mentioning that on July 27, the U.S. Senate passed the Chip and Technology Act of 2022, Chip Plus Act, with 64 votes in favor and 33 votes against. However, as U.S. President Biden recently tested positive for the new crown virus and entered a state of isolation again, the signing of the bill may be delayed. The three-year-old, $280 billion subsidy bill aims to ease a persistent chip shortage while boosting the U.S. chip industry against China. In the eyes of the U.S. government, 14 nanometers are a watershed between advanced and backward chip manufacturing processes, and 14 nanometers and below are advanced manufacturing processes. Therefore, the embargo of the United States focuses on chip equipment with 14 nanometers and below. The core purpose is to cooperate with the newly introduced CHIP Act, while vigorously developing domestic chip manufacturing, while preventing China from obtaining advanced chip equipment with the same process, in order to achieve the purpose of curbing Chinese chips from competing with them. According to reports, with the passage of the U.S. chip bill, relevant departments are mulling a new round of restrictions on China's chip industry. Some experts analyze that U.S. sanctions will definitely bring pain in the short term, and China needs one or two years to digest. However, since Huawei was sanctioned, Chinese chip manufacturers have clearly realized that the U.S. policy of curbing China's development of advanced technologies will not change for a long time. Such bottom-line thinking will promote the industry to more actively establish relationships with markets outside the United States contact, and accelerate the improvement of their own capabilities and levels. The RAND Corporation once summed up the means of the United States to suppress China's scientific and technological progress as stumbling, running ahead and making up for shortcomings, which include both technological warfare and public opinion warfare. Recently, China's chip industry is setting off an anti-corruption storm that has attracted domestic and foreign attention. 
As Ding Wenwo, General Manager of the National Integrated Circuit Industry Investment Fund, referred to as the Big Fund, was investigated for serious violations of discipline and law, several industry executives have been investigated one after another in the past month. American public opinion took the opportunity to question whether China's investment in the chip field is effective, and also claimed that this would make the Chinese chip industry uneasy, which is deliberately muddying the water. In fact, it is impossible for a few corrupt elements to represent the vast majority of the hardworking and conscientious backbones in this industry. China's industrial investment and financial policies in recent years have been well coordinated, especially the outstanding progress made in the past few years, which is the overall appearance of China's chip industry. In the past few years, China's chip industry has been struggling to break through the stuck neck dilemma, and some media in the United States and the West have never stopped singing bad. But it is also them, paying close attention to the fact that 19 of the 20 fastest growing chip companies in the world in the past four quarters are from mainland China, China is expected to expand 31 chip factories by the end of 2024. It can also be seen from this that no matter whether it is bad or flattering, they are only the positive and negative hands of suppressing and suppressing the development of China's chip industry. Against this background, China's chip industry is even more tolerant of sand, foam and moths. At present, the global chip industry is undergoing major changes. China is a rising star, but the basic situation of the industry being large but not strong has not changed. The alarm of encountering external stuck neck is far from being lifted. This is destined to be a competition of time and endurance. The severe situation is the most sophisticated X-ray machine. Whether all the actions of the chip industry are ultimately conducive to China's independent innovation, we must get this X-ray machine and take a picture. The high-tech industry, including the chip industry, is a special field and needs to reverse the capital cycle to a certain extent, especially to prevent short-term speculation and misappropriation of money. Practitioners in the chip industry not only need to have top professional knowledge, but also need to have a strong sense of mission for support. This serious and powerful anti-corruption action highlights China's serious attitude towards this, and also gives the entire Chinese industry a soothing, difficulties and gaps exist, but fraud and corruption are absolutely not allowed. On the road of independent innovation of the chip industry, there can no longer be a second Hanshin, which is a clear signal sent by the chip industry's anti-corruption. According to data, in 2021, U.S. companies' investment in semiconductor research and development will account for 55% of the world's total, while mainland Chinese semiconductor companies will only be 3.1% in the same period. China's mobilization of funds for semiconductors is clearly not too much but too little. In this case, good steel should be used especially on the blade without waste and wastage. The discovery of several worms is not a denial of the efforts of the big fund and the entire industry, but to lay a healthier foundation for the industry, so that the industry can start clean inside and out. The so-called threat of Chinese chips is so high now that the United States is to a certain extent in response to domestic political divisions. In the face of this situation, China still cannot be eager for quick success and must stay awake at all times. Thank you.